Hello everyone and welcome back to Restore It. Okay, so I think I'm almost done with the small patch repairs. Firstly, I did the front left corner. I'm going to redo this at the end to see how much I've improved, so we'll leave that for now. Secondly, I repaired a small patch on the rear bench, which I thought went kind of well. I then replaced three bad spots on the right door sill that are now quite hard to see, which I'm very happy with. And last episode, I removed three old lap welds, which are pretty useless by this point, and butt welded in some new metal. Before we get into this episode, I want to show you some of the problem areas left to do on the chassis and the replacement panels that are now on their way to the workshop from E30 Garage Norway. Starting at the back, the tail panel will be chopped and replaced with a piece like this. The rear battery tray and the opposite side will be replaced with these two pieces. Both rear arches will be replaced by two pieces like this. The front foot wells and torpedo walls will be replaced with these pieces. The side skirt things both need doing and will be done with two of these pieces. The front two lifting points under these parts are also on the list. Lastly, the piece with the rectangle missing from the middle of it will be replaced with this large piece that will also cover the inside of the rear wheel arch. All of that to come starting next episode. In this episode I'm going to focus on this awkwardly placed lap weld. Underneath it is the bracket for the front seat to mount to. That bracket was also rusting, so my plan was to remove it and either clean it up or replace it for a new one. Firstly, I needed to remove this lap weld without damaging said bracket beneath it. I marked a much larger area than the lap weld to make sure all of the rust was removed. So this cut was kind of important as the bracket was right below it. At this point, I didn't know if the bracket was available or not. I think I might have nicked it in a few places. This second cut was much simpler, going all the way through with nothing underneath. I then punched the corners with a centre punch so I could drill them out to keep the corners as round as possible. I wanted to get most of the undercoating off of the bracket to get a better look at the spot welds that held it in place. I also couldn't help myself but to have a go at scraping some of the larger bits off. Going back to the top side, I made two half cuts down both sides and then went back underneath to finish them off. With a bit of persuasion, it came off, revealing the rusty seat bracket beneath it. After seeing that, I wanted to remove it and either replace it or clean it up and put it back in rust free. I found the spot welds, punched the centers and drilled them out. Once they were all drilled, I split them with a splitter and screwdriver. I should probably get another splitter, eh? After I split it from the floor, I realised it was still being held in by more spot welds on the inside lip. I marked their location and rotated the car to drill them out. With those three drilled, it was a case of splitting the bracket off without doing too much damage to the surrounding area. It turns out E30 Garage Norway currently have this bracket in prototype stage. They have sent two of them for me to work with. As you can see, there is still a bit of rust where the bracket used to be. To get a better idea of how bad it was, I wire wheeled the area with the grinder. Thank you. 
After removing the surface rust, I could see that this edge was too thin to weld to, so I marked a line further up and decided I would drill a hole for the seat bracket bolt. With the area free of rust and what was left of the bracket removed, I could start to think about the replacement piece I had to now conjure up. This was one of the more difficult pieces I've had to make. I'll be glad to have some press panels to play with. After a lot of bending, cutting and whacking, I ended up with a piece that didn't fit well at all. Before I try and weld it in place, I have a quick word from today's sponsor, Ridge. If you're in the market for a minimal front pocket wallet, you need to check out the Ridge. The Ridge wallet has more than 30,000 five star reviews. That's a lot of happy customers. The wallets are available in a variety of materials and designs, including aluminium, titanium and carbon fiber. With two metal plates bound together by a durable elastic band, the Ridge looks nothing like a traditional wallet. Ridge also offer a high quality range of everyday essentials, including phone cases, bags, power banks, knives and accessories. The commuter weatherproof backpack features an onboard USB for charging, a protective space for a laptop, RFID blocking materials and a huge amount of storage. So if you're tired of your old bulky wallet or just want to grab that fresh backpack, try Ridge today by going to my link in the video description and use code RESTORE at checkout for a 10% discount off your entire order. You'll also get a lifetime warranty with free worldwide shipping and returns. Thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this episode and supporting the channel. Let's continue where we left off. With the new piece ready to go, I used magnets to hold it in place while I tacked it where I could. This piece didn't fit well at all, but I thought if I can just weld it in place where it's flush, I could then whack it into the correct shape whilst it's in the car. After a bit of welding, it was finally looking all right. It still needed some shaping, but I was just glad it was in. The welding on this wasn't the best, so I started with a grinding wheel to remove just the heads of the welds. I then used the Rodok finishing pad and finally moved onto a flat disc. As with the previous repairs, I'm going to do a final flattening of these welds once all the welding is done. With the welds flat enough for now, I shaped a new piece with a large hammer. After a final grind it was almost completely blended into the rest of the chassis. When the bracket arrives I'll drill the new holes and weld them in. To prepare for the new panels I'm going to get the front right lifting point off and the area clean of any undercoating. 
Unlike the other one, this lifting point was still hanging on for dear life. It didn't take too much splitting to remove it. Once the new parts are here, I'll start cutting all of this out, but not until they arrive. Until then I'm going to remove the undercoating from all of the areas I'll be working on in the coming episodes. It's quite a monotonous task, so I'll get this done off camera and come back ready to go with the more serious cutting jobs. I'm also going to get some bracing bars to prevent the car from snapping in half, as some of you have suggested. Some of you really aren't into this chassis series, and I'm sorry to hear that, but just think, it won't be long before it's all done, and we're moving on to painting and reassembling it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.